Go Gretchen is her uh, Twitch channel and YouTube channel. She does piercing and makeup um, videos as well as other subjects as well. And she just streams every day with Dead by Daylight and other stuff. Gretchen, thank you for joining us tonight to help out. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. Let's make sure we have volumes level set properly. Not on your end. It's it's on my end. I've got like. I'll say I promise not to scream like I do when I stream. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like too many freaking buttons here. So uh, yeah, um, this this is your first time helping out with this. I've, I've... I'm nervous. <laughs> Have you been looking back to see what to expect and everything? Have you? I had, I was I was talking with Luke earlier. I was like, ah, ah. I'm not witty or funny. I don't know. I'm nervous. <clears throat> yeah, you Luke Luke has probably told you to prepare for the poop. I, I'm I'm sure. Oh yeah, I know that's kind of linked with him. Yeah, well, he, there's no poop to this week, so you know. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> he misses the poop, which is just just so poetic. I also brought a cat with me. Oh, good. I saw Grady earlier, so I have Chester I with Chester. me. <laughs> He's my little, my little shadow. Grady was all over me like not twenty minutes ago. Now he's nice. off to do whatever because you know. Bye bye. There's cats. That's how they do. Yep. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. A little, little segment we like to call. What the fuck is tomorrow with you? And uh, it's it's the weekend or the week after Easter weekend. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, what it, did did you ever used to do the Easter egg hunts when you were a kid? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And and I usually get sick from them from all the candy consumed. I've got stories. It they're bad. So you, you, there was a cutoff point though. You you stopped doing it at some point, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, these folks didn't. Um, mm -hmm. Send that first story over to you. Did you tackle a child on Sunday? Local mall apologizes for Easter egg hunt fiasco. <laughs> and I love the picture they chose to use here. Like, here's happy kids and a mob. That's not what happened. That's not what happened, not happened. at all. <laughs> False advertising. Um... Come on, computer. Computer. There we go. Uh, organizers of an Easter egg hunt that happened over the weekend at the Green Shopping Mall in Beaver Creek are apologizing to the community in a since deleted viral Facebook post. The mall's management team said they had a difficult, difficult time with crowd control at the egg hunt. They say grown adults pushed children out of the way and people were knocked over as they searched for two thousand easter eggs and close to 100 prizes that were hidden at the mall center court area green called the behavior of some people at the event absolutely unacceptable and said that many children left the event completely empty-handed how the fuck do you do this uh first of all i want to see the viral post but i'm, I'm sad oh, that it's deleted oh now. they have they have the uh the, they they uh if you click that link there they have a, a screen cap of it oh they have a screenshot of yeah. it yeah oh. Oh no! Yeah. Second year holding the event. Oh, did they not have like a cutoff? Oh yeah, they did. They they were supposedly going to stagger it, with one to two year olds got to start first, and then the three and four year olds would get there and the pick. But but instead, everyone just jumped because they were offering prizes. Was... They were, weren't just oh. offering candy and shit. They were offering like, like actual prizes that adults would be interested in. Which was your first fucking mistake, because you adults know, are telling don't need that. No. Yeah, and kids kids don't need that kind of stuff. They just want the candy. They just want to hang out. They want candy. They want to put random weird shit in their mouths. You're there. The only reason yeah. you're an adult there is you're there to stop them from putting weird shit in their mouths. Exactly. Be like, no, we don't eat the egg. Everything else, fine. You you have no other purpose at being at the egg hunt. Just, you're, you're, Mostly, you're there when the kids are of a certain age. You're just there to keep the kid from killing themselves. Is is Basically. your main job? Yeah, you're you keep the kid alive day to day. That's that's what you do. You're not supposed to be in there. Like this is like Black Friday has migrated to a new terrible thing. We get it more than once a year now. Just all these holidays. What 
what in the name of just is so disappointing <laughs> it's it's so terrible like you're an adult like these kids don't understand it oh yeah so i have seen specific adult easter egg hunts before yeah i mean we um, cheat them away from say the two-year-old right um, you, you have like a little limit you have some rules or something like that not just a free-for-all i just uh, especially at a mall like so it was inside oh yeah yeah, adults were not permitted to pick up the eggs, yet we saw so many doing so, which results in some children leaving egg empty-handed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what they were relying on is, we're going to give you rules, and you're going to follow them, which mm -hmm. was, like, yeah, that's <laughs> way too much faith in, in in adults to behave like adults. Yes. And we're, we're kind of... So we're going into just some general weirdness on the next one. Um... <laughs> The, one of the things we, we tend to, to look at on the show is just shit that happens that you, you go through life not thinking that this is a real thing. And, and yeah, it's th these things can happen. Like, just any given day, you're minding your own business, you're working your job, things are normal, and all of a sudden, you have to figure out how to deal with a fucking moose. Ah, uh, excellent. I mean... Moose wanted us into Providence Hotel, uh, Hospital Lobby in Anchorage. Moose in South Central have been popping up in unexpected places lately, from a living room in Soldanta to the lobby of a Providence, Alaska facility on Thursday. According to staff, the moose walked in the front door of the lobby uh, after sighting the decorative potted plants uh, through the panel glass in the front of the building. Patients, healthcare staff, and security officers then watches the moose, a youngster about a year old, walk straight up to what appeared to be a uh, type of umbrella tree and sampled a few of the stems. Even though Alaskans are used to seeing the monstrous mammals, the presence of one inside the hotel lobby was a surprise for those inside. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. Um, witness on the video says, what's the code for this? And th this is what, like, everyone's like, oh, this is cute and adorable. No, no, these are, like... No, they're terrifying. Th they're, these are just giant furry death machines. Even though, like, that one doesn't even have any any antlers. You're like, yeah. oh, it's fun. No, no, no. This could still gut you. <laughs> th that's, if they don't have antlers, that just means they have to get creative. Yes. And they will. Ugh. I mean, I'd be the person that was like, oh, my God, I want to touch it. <laughs> don't do that. And, and then everyone would be like, no, Gretchen, no, we don't do that. Well, like, you're in the right so... place if you want to touch the, the, the moose. You're already in the emergency that is room. So might as, well, might as well take a chance. You know, it's... it's... <laughs> I, I just... you, How the fuck... It's your job to deal with the patients. It's your job to do paperwork. It's your job to, you know, help out. What the fuck are you supposed to do about this? I, I might bring with control? Lyle. <laughs> An <laughs> I don't even think animal control is, is ready to handle it. You have to, is it like wildlife management or something? Yeah, I just love how the officers are just kind of staring at it like, well, what now, guys? <laughs> what do we do? Well, um... We were not trained for this. Do, do we do we shoot it and plant a gun on it? Does that work? Is that no? Okay, well, <laughs> shit. Then I'm out of ideas. Oh, we're not getting a pet. Luke is telling Luke is saying we're not getting a pet moose. I want a pet moose. Well, I'm... you won't let me get a pet goat. Can I get a pet moose instead? Why do you want a pet goat? I love goats. I love goats so much. Also, they're, they're, you know, they cut the grass for you. <laughs> We've had, in my, in my neighborhood, one of my neighbors had a pet goat. And it didn't cut the grass. Oh. Do you know what it did? Scream. Oh, well, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Hours on end. They finally, animal, the, the, the city came out and said, no, this this is not belong. Make go. No goat. No. 
Y'all didn't, y'all didn't like the bleh. <laughs> Not at like three in the goddamn morning. Fair, fair, I suppose. <laughs> Ghosts just want to sing a song and it's a terrible one. And eat everything. And <sighs> try. See, a moose would be better. This would be better. They don't. No, they just, well, you know, they might destroy. <laughs> just murder a couple of the neighborhood kids. No big deal. Uh, yeah. Next up, uh, so we're kind of in an age where uh, everybody's having to double up on work, which is terrifying and horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's the side hustle sort of thing, which is this is not how you do the side hustle. Um, South Carolina first responder accused of using emergency lights to deliver pizza. Oh, no. South Carolina's responder was uh, arrested after he allegedly used his emergency lights while delivering pizza. Thomas Leon Reed III, a new member of the Rock Hill, South Carolina Rescue Squad, uh, was arrested after a man claimed to see Reed speeding down an area roadway with his lights on, causing other vehicles to get out of the way. A report said authorities learned Reed was working at a local pizza hut. <laughs> now I can understand better of the pizza places. I I could understand how you'd think this would work. Like it's foolproof, right? Got to get there in a certain amount of time, otherwise it's free. Or used to be. <laughs> like I mean, this guy gets outside the box. This guy gets the pizzas there so fast, I don't know how he does it. Yeah, it's... Be like, don't be like um, our Pizza Hut is 10 minutes away, but you got here in only, like, seven. See, I think you, you, you don't have to wonder when the pizza shows up, because there's fucking sirens and lights outside. They only have to ring the doorbell. It's just like, oh, it's pizza's here! It's very loud. And all for Pizza Hut. For, yeah, like... Pizza Hut is... the good pizza. It's so bad now. It used to be so good. Back in its heyday. Oh, oh, yes. You actually wanted to go into there and sit down and eat the red cups and everything. They had the the stained glass little lights above and yeah. yeah. (laughs) Salad bar. The salad bar. Yeah. Everything was so... And now everything sucks. Yeah. (laughs) Y'all don't know. This is like, what, 10, 15 years ago. It was so good. And and then it just, it stopped. I blame Pepsi. Everything's Pepsi's fault. Yeah, well, they bought it as freaking yum foods is what you call it. And, it, and the irony being, it's not. It's not. It's not. I used to love their stuffed crust. It's not the same. I say the, the last good pizza franchise still in operation is Godfather's Pizza. And most people don't have it near them. But I promise you, it is the best fucking takeout pizza from a franchise you've ever had. I was gonna say I've never even heard of it. Godfather's, oh, they're they're so good. And somebody, and people on the channel, and people, people in the YouTube comments are going like, "No, it's bullshit. This is the best one." No, if we're talking between Pizza Hut, Domino's, um, I can't even think what's up. Papa John's, Papa John's, Godfather's blows them all away. They, never even heard of it. You never I wonder if there's one near me. God, they're so good. I'll have to look that up later. Uh, okay, we're, we're getting... This one, I had to do this story because I get to say something over and over again as part of an actual news story, and I, I don't apologize. Man who became trapped inside Edmonton public art charged with mischief. Ah. Mischief. Man who became trapped inside a notable piece of Edmonton art made of large silver spheres. They're they're fighting. They're fighting saying the word. Was arrested soon after firefighters helped him escape the structure. Uh, a man was inside the mound the mound of polished stainless steel balls with no way out. So you were you were trapped beneath balls, sir. So many. Okay. <laughs> just just covered in balls. In all shapes and sizes. Oh God, yeah, just a variety. It's just it's so, all. so many balls. <laughs> um, Connor Swint said he was on a post-Easter dinner run past the structure perched on the edge of Box Drive and Kesdale Bridge, 
when he noticed a commotion. Firefighters were attempting to extricate the man. Twin said he asked firefighters if it was a man or an animal trapped inside, which is already a good one. You can't tell the difference. Yeah. We learned a person was inside and began documenting the incident on his phone and poked his head inside the sculpture for a closer look, which is not helping. Hey, buddy. He said the man inside the structure was beginning to panic. Well, you know what? If I was covered in balls, I would start to panic as well. Um, Think that through? He was kind of like watching a mouse fall into a bucket, said Schwint. Oh. Um... Police say the man had climbed on top of the structure and become trapped inside soon after. To extricate the man, firefighters had to cut in the structure and remove one of the balls. A kind of like Hitler. Um, three crews, including a technical rescue team, were involved in the call. No injuries were reported. Uh, soon after the man slipped out of the sculpture, he was arrested. Police say the man caused damage to several of the balls while climbing on top of the structure. And yes, if, if people were climbing on my balls, that would cause damage to me as well. Yeah. Um, 26-year-old open count with one charge of mischief, over 5,000. Look, oh, great. This Hans Klaver is a fan of the, pre, the piece and made his way down to the rescue scene Sunday after hearing about it on Facebook. Quote, I like the balls. One of the people, who, one of the few people who do so I came down to have a look. There was a guy inside there. If you, Hans Klaver, for now on, whenever anyone Googles your name, it's going to take you back to a, a new story you quoted being saying, I like the balls. So. You know, Hans, you do you. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Uh, I'm glad that you could just gaze upon the balls. Uh, but I am sorry that this guy was causing mischief around your favorite balls. You might even say he had a lot of balls. Yeah, he did. That's he did. The, the, I've never seen someone with so many balls. So much, just so, just a lot of balls on that guy. Balls. <laughs> Who would look at that in this guy? I'm going to climb that shit. Who would look at it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're six i could understand you'd be like i'm yeah. gonna climb this not if you're it seems fun not if you're like a grown-ass man gonna get your ass arrested why just i i have gotten to be relatively an adult and i understand like I, when i was little stupid things seemed like a great idea like, mm -hmm. jumping into a swimming pool with all your clothes on. That seems like a great idea when you're six. You're grown up. You don't do shit like that. I'm trying to, was it open at the top or something? Like, yeah, that's apparently there's, okay. there's an opening. Interesting that they would leave it open, but okay. Just <laughs> mm. free to experience being covered in balls. I, I just fucking know. Now we're getting to our 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 uh, our back into our wheelhouse of the last two ones uh, this week. There is a story here somehow. Naked man steals school bus with dead deer in back, leads officers on chase. Oh God! York Council, York County, Pennsylvania, man in Pennsylvania was arrested and charged after police said he led officers on a chase in a stolen school bus. We're already starting off good. Officers with the Carroll Township Police Department spotted the school bus, which was reported stolen Tuesday morning, driving through the pocket, uh, the parking lot of a Giant Foods in Rite Aid. Authorities said the lights on the bus were intermittently turning on and off. According to the police, officers caught up the school bu bus and tried to pull it over, but the immediate driver immediately pulled away. Driver identified as 25-year-old Tony Saunders. And when someone's smiling in their in their mugshot, already yeah. there's a story. Yeah. Nearly flipped the bus over and eventually drove into a neighborhood where he got out of the vehicle, started running through a wooded area. Police say Saunders stripped his clothes off as he was running around, was arrested naked. According to police, Saunders admitted to taking the bus early in the day. He said he had put a dead deer in the back of the bus explaining he planned to take it home to use as fertilizer for his garden. 
charged with fleeing an officer, stolen property, reckless driving, and resisting arrest. What the fuck happened here? Man, this dude went on a journey and not a good one. It's just... Every step of the way, just compounding it. Like, first of all, you stole a school bus. This like is that alone. This is not a, a maneuverable vehicle. This is not a practical vehicle. This is not a fast vehicle. No. This, it's a whale on wheels. And you've chosen this as your means to escape law enforcement. So so you're already you're dead deer. With the dead deer, you're like, well, okay, for I, it was a roomy vehicle. There, there was plenty of yes. Where did you get? It doesn't say in the story anywhere where he got the fucking dead deer. Like, did he kill it? Did, Maybe yeah. he hit it with another vehicle. Did you was kill it? Hey, we're you just going along and like, oh, there's something dead. I'm going to put it in here with me. I mean, to be fair, people in my hometown do that, just because. They can so like I wouldn't put that past me. put that past people. <laughs> like I've seen some people put some roadkill in their car, but you had to, to had to add naked on top of it. There was no reason in any of this to take your clothes off. I mean, maybe he thought that he'd be more aerodynamic than running. I don't know. Like, no, actually, he, less. He, he, it, Gretchen, when, when dudes are naked, I promise you, they are much less aerodynamic for, for particular reasons. That's why Speedos were invented, because otherwise it's, yeah. He had the thought process I did. <laughs> that, that's, if you want, you know, aerodynamic, if you want to get away faster, you keep your clothes on. Keep them on, keep it all intact. Because otherwise you're flapping around, It's the, no one's having a good time. Although I can see, if you're a cop, you're very reluctant to put your hands on a naked person. So maybe it's sort of like, you know, it's like how how lizards break their tail off. It's you take your clothes off and hope predators go away. They look at him like, oh, God, never mind. But let's compound that. Let's let's crank that up a few notches. It's our last one this week. Oh, no. Naked, greased up Florida man accused of breaking into two homes, jumping in pool. Deputies believe the suspect was under influence of unknown substances. DeBerry, Florida. The man was arrested Friday morning in DeBerry after allegedly broke into two homes and tried to evade deputies by jumping in a swimming pool and onto a trampoline, all while naked. Yep, they say they responded at around 2 a.m. to a report of a burglary. Uh, encountered the suspect, identifies 34-year-old Blake Tokman. Um, Tokman smashed out a window to break into the home, then left and broke into another home. They encountered Tokman at the second house. Body-worn camera video released from the sheriff's office of Tokman running from deputies, jumping in a pool, climbing out of the pool, and jumping onto a trampoline. I don't know if you've ever been on a trampoline. Oh, yeah. But if you're trying to get away from other people, that's not the method. You're going <laughs> two places up and down. That's all you're. That's all you're doing. You have oh. you have reduced everything to the Z axis. That's it. Um, sheriff said it took four deputies to get custom, uh, custody of Tokman, who kicked or hit the de deputies. One of the deputies was cut on the arm. In addition to being naked, the sheriff's officer said Tokman was covered in wheel-bearing grease, peppermint oil, and blood. What the A concoction? What the what the fuck happened there? <laughs> what a little essential oil claimed to smell nice and you know change changing some wheels and then you know. It all went downhill from there. I believe he may have been under the influence of an unknown substance. Now, when they say unknown substance, what they mean is meth. I was about to say, be like, it's always fucking meth. Just, it's always fucking, the guy's just, let's see if I can I bring this up. They've got the, uh, trying to make that a little bit bigger, but yeah, they've got the, the 
Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? There he is. In handcuffed on the trampoline. I what the fuck happened? I just uh, Meth. All right, yes, I know meth. I know. I was about to say, I mean, I guess we could just leave it at that and be like, do we need an explanation? No. <laughs> there it is. Tara and I often talk about how we should be take we should be sent to high schools to tell kids not to do drugs. Not because, you know, it's bad or anything. It's just this is meth. This is you on fucking meth. Do you want to be a news article? Do do you do you want to find yourself on a trampoline covered in axle grease and blood and peppermint oil? Which means if it's blood, it means either you cut someone or you've yeah. been cut. And just the idea of peppermint oil coming into contact with an open wound, I just yee yee. What are you? I would sting a little bit. <laughs> Does that sound like a fun time to anybody? Well, okay, probably somebody's going, oh, yeah. I mean, you throw a trampoline into the mix, it's always... No, it's not. No, it's, not. Um, <laughs> it's not always a fun time. I'm still a little traumatized from my trampoline as a kid. Um, turned into a taco during an ice storm because uh, the branch fell on it. Um, but I just, you know, you're running away and all of a sudden you're like, oh, trampoline. There we go. That's my getaway. One of the things you should not do naked is trampolining. Because things tend to bounce around and slap into each other. And <laughs> we, thought, we thought the last guy wasn't aerodynamic. <laughs> you get some interesting bruises after that. Like, it's like, how did you get a mushroom-shaped bruise on your stomach? Funny story! <laughs> so it took three ingredients. Um... And an unknown substance. Unknown with this. So yeah, it was the peppermint oil. That's what it was. You're not. You're not supposed to. You know, ingest it. So what? What have we learned this week? Well, we've learned that if 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 you, you just don't do math, that's what we fucking learned. Don't just do. don't do. Just don't do it. Um, or you're gonna end up naked on a trampoline covered in axle grease. It's like it's you're fucking. Family Guy cutaway gag at that point. What the shit? Um, we've learned that if you are going to attempt to evade law enforcement, the vehicle to do so is not a school bus. School bus. You want to remain hidden. <laughs> Nobody drag races at a school bus. Yeah. Um, we've learned if you encounter a mountain of balls... Don't climb them because you could be trapped under a mountain of balls. Just... Usher into that. <laughs> Damn. It sounds like a fucking porno. Um, <laughs> we've learned that uh, it, lots of us have second jobs, but just a lot of those two don't mix. It might seem like there's a synergy there, but no. Uh, we learned that sometimes in life, you have to figure out how to deal with a goddamn moose. Just because. And finally, we've learned you cannot have an Easter egg hunt and let the adults participate because people are terrible. Just don't. That, one, that one's so bad. It's like, no, it's not for you. Tackling a two. Who the fuck tackles a two year old? That's my prize. <laughs> two year old's like, I was just going to go eat grass. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, I don't need a... <laughs> yeah, then, you know what? The kid it doesn't even know why the fuck he's there in the first place. Just let... Just... I was about to say, a two, two-year-old's just like, whatever, literally putting anything in their mouth. My two-and-a-half-year-old nephew, I saw him eating cat food relatively recently, and he was like, all right, you know what? You do you. 